Mike here with another Watchman TOL. I apologize for the crudeness of this one, guys. I'm under the weather. I'm quite sick right now. Um, but got to get this one out. Today's rapture hint is in 2 Thessalonians 2, but it goes beyond that also into Philippians as well. The day of Christ, guys, is not the second coming of Christ, not the return of Christ. It is the rapture. I think you're going to find this one very eye-opening. Let's take a look. All right, um, I need to share this. This is this is really good stuff, guys. Um, so, I was reading uh, Philippians actually today, and and bouncing between the NIV and the KJV versions, and just you know getting curious about some of the words again, which I some of them I've looked at before, others I have not in the Greek, uh, in the Strong's Concordance, and. Philippians ended up hyperlinking me back to 2 Thessalonians 2. And I started seeing some, <clears throat> some glaring you know, differences between the NIV and the KGV, but some glaring um, you know, parallels between the you know, 2 Thessalonians and Philippians in the KGV. Okay, now the Holy Spirit, I believe, is really working to assemble um, all of these puzzle pieces regarding the rapture uh, to make it plain to us that believe uh, that the rapture is approaching. And the Holy Spirit is, I believe, revealing these things in little puzzle pieces and increments with different members of the body of, of Christ um, in order for us to, to share and encourage and uh, elevate, you know, everybody that's in the, in the body of the church. Now, <clears throat> one of the things I noticed is that you know, you, you need to let scripture define itself. You need to let scripture support itself. You need to let scripture explain itself and answer questions that you have as you're reading through it. And the first step that a good Berean will take into doing that is to examine scripture that is close by the verse you're looking at so that it's closest to the context of where you're reading. So you look at the scripture in context first and then what often happens is that I've discovered is that you'll find something that will uh, hyperlink you out of that that nearby scripture that you're looking at that you're trying to interrogate and investigate. You'll find something that will hyperlink you to another book in the Bible, whether it be the Old Testament, the New Testament. And when you follow that hyperlink, you'll typically get information that is going to answer your question and provide a fullness a, a, a certainty, a surety of what you're trying to answer, what your confusion is, what you're trying to interrogate, you'll find the answer. So we're going to do that here today. Now I'm in 2 Thessalonians 2 in the NIV, and you'll notice that at the end of verse 2 here, we're talking about the day of the Lord. Okay, now there's the second coming of Christ, and there's this day of the Lord, but it's actually in the, the KJV is going to clear this up. This, this translation here in the KJV is going to clear up that there is a, a very separate, very different, distinct uh, day of Christ, okay, the day of Jesus Christ, and that's referring to the rapture, okay? So when we go into the KJV, it's going to clear that up. Now, let's take a look. Um, but again, let's review this really quickly in, uh, in, the, in, the, in verse 1 here, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered to him. We ask you, brothers and sisters, not to become easily unsettled or alarmed by the teaching allegedly from us, whether by a prophecy or by word uh, of mouth or by letter, asserting that the day of the Lord has already come. So we have a link here between verse 1 and 2, and, and Paul is trying to make it very clear. In fact, he even says in verse 5, don't you remember when I was with you, I used to tell you these things? It's like, have you forgotten already, you guys, what I've tried to explain? So he's trying to make it plain. Now, let's switch over to the KJV. You'll notice here in verse 2, it says that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter from us, as the day of Christ is at hand. Okay. Now, let's go on to verse 3. We got to break this down. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day, what day is Paul referring to? He's referring back to the day of Christ, which is in verse 2. 
which is referring to what's in verse 1, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and gathering to him. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm still sick here. Um, okay, so verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day, the day of Christ, our gathering to him, that, the rapture, okay, the rapture, shall not come, shall not come, except or until there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, okay? It's also called, in the NIV, if we switch back over to it, the rebellion. We can see here the word rebellion. So the rebellion occurs first, all right? Now, it's a bad translation. As I say here in my NIV translation, I'm calling out the Strong's word apostasia, and, um, and I'm also calling out the Latin Vulgate as well. And so, lest any man deceive you uh, in any way, for unless the departure come first and the man of sin be revealed. So that is the better uh, translation. And when we look at the Latin here, we see in the Latin Vulgate, the venerit right here, decessio, decessio in this context that literally means departure, okay? And so the, I took the Latin Vulgate and I put it in Google Translator and I translated it into English and this is what we get, okay? So we've got to be good Bereans. We've got to look at these things, right? So even the Latin Vulgate is giving it away that the, we're, we are talking about the rapture. Now let's go back to KGV, okay? So... <clears throat> Except there be a falling way first. Okay, so it's it's kind of a, a double, you know, nuance or a double confirmation that that day, the day of the rapture, when we're gathered to Jesus Christ here in verse one, shall not come except there be a rapture first. <laughs> that's, what, that's basically what it says. Okay, the day of Christ won't come until there's the rapture. Okay, and that man of sin be revealed. So in order for the man of sin, the man of perdition, to be revealed. The rapture has got to come first. So we're not going to be here to see the revealing of the Antichrist. We're not going to see who that person is. Maybe we will from our chambers that we hide in for a little while until the indignation is passed. Maybe from there, from that vantage point, we'll see who it is. But certainly we won't be on earth to see. Okay? Now, and then we go to verse 6. And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. Okay? And so we've got, uh, I've got something highlighted here. I can't click into that. All right, so now, okay, so that that withholdeth or letteth, okay, is that which, which hinders the Antichrist from making his appearance. So I do believe that that is the Holy Spirit here on earth, okay? That Holy Spirit needs to be removed the body of Christ needs to be removed and then the Antichrist will be revealed, okay? And we have another confirmation here in verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Now, if I found something interesting here with the taken out of the way, and I really had to look at this. Greek is, it can be complex, okay? So I really had to look very carefully at this. And I found another way that that can actually be translated here, okay? Taken out of the way can equal to be married to out from amongst. And we can see here that, you know, obviously the taken out of the way or taken, it appears in the KJV 678 times. Um, and, and then we can see in the different manners. Okay. So to, to be is 255 times. All right. So that's the most times. Okay. And we can see, but then down here, which is interesting to be married. Okay. To be married. Okay. I thought that was very interesting. <coughs> now let's look at the three times in scripture that um, to be married to, be married to appears those three times. All three of them are in Romans chapter seven. 
okay? And we see the first two instances, we're talking about marriage to a man, to another man. Okay, now verse four, it gets interesting. Look at this. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, even, this is the important part, just take forget the to another, be married even to him who is raised from the dead. That's to Jesus Christ. That we should be married to Jesus Christ. That we should bring forth fruit unto God. Okay? So the taken out of the way can also be read as to be married to Christ out from amongst. Amongst what? Amongst the world. The unbelievers the inhabitants of the earth we the like the elect the body of Christ are are the the elect okay that are uh, residing on earth right now and then of course there's the elect after the rapture happens there are those who are going to receive the holy spirit and, and they're going to be the two witnesses and then there's going to be the 144,000 there's going to be all these other believers and they're going to be tribulation saints okay but i found this to be very interesting okay this to be married to it's another way to look at it now this, this phrase up here in verse 2, the day of Christ at, is at hand, okay? This is a hyperlink. This hyperlinked me out of Thessalonians and put me into Philippians, okay? So let's look at that. <clears throat> the day of Christ is referred to in Scripture four times in total, three times in Philippians, and one time in first in second Thessalonians, which is where we are right now. Okay. So let's look at the final remaining three times that this day of Christ appears in Scripture, which are in Philippians 1 6, 1 10, and 2 16. Philippians 1 6, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Okay. Philippians 1.10, that ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Philippians 2.16, holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Now, remember what I was saying earlier about context. You need to we, we want to understand this day of Christ better. So how do we do that? Well, we, we've got to read the, the rest of Philippians. We, Paul is, is, is writing this epistle. It's a letter, okay? And there's, there's a contextual meaning just within the, 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 sa the same letter. The whole letter has its own context, okay? So we're going to get the answer. We're going to get a tied up answer with a bow on it near the end of Philippians here in Philippians 3.20 about this day of Christ that's being referred to in Philippians 1 and 2, okay? So further explanation. Now look how Paul wraps this up here. But our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who, by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control... Okay, we're, we're, it's kind of a hint here, a nod to he who now letteth, okay, because that person has the control, has the power and the control. He who now letteth, that's Jesus Christ, that's God, okay? <clears throat> so, Lord Jesus Christ, who, by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control, will do what? will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. That is summing up what's going to happen, the action that will happen in the rapture. He's going to transform our low, lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. So we have some amazing things here because those verses in Philippians are tying into 2 Thessalonians 2, which is also all about the rapture here, okay? They're tied together by what? What's the hyperlink? What's the, what's the common link? The day of Christ right here in verse 2, okay? This is what hyperlinked us 
right into Philippians, where we see the day of Christ referred to three additional times, and then this summary here in Philippians 3, 20 through 21, about our citizenship being in heaven and transforming our lowly bodies. So we this day of Christ that is at hand is not talking about the, the second coming of Christ, the return of Christ, okay, for the entire world to see. No, no. This is referring to the rapture. And guys, that's how the Holy Spirit works. And that's how he assembles these details. When we're good Bereans and we search out the word, it starts to reveal its own truth by itself. And for that, praise the Lord. Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. I hope this encourages you. Have a great day and a great week. And I look forward to seeing you all soon in the air where we'll be waving palms and singing songs. Maranatha, Mike out.